Hello and welcome to the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast, where we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them, they struggle with clarifying their capital gains tax deferral options, not having a clear plan is the enemy and using a proven tax deferral strategy such as the deferred sales trust is the best way for you to exit public or private stocks real estate cryptocurrency business uh save a failed 1031 exchange so you can create and preserve more wealth or help your clients do the same hey i'm your host brett swartz in each episode i'm joined by some of the best real estate financial wealth crypto and leadership minds in the world where they share their ideas deal stories and inspiration so together we can make complex tax deferral strategies simple and passive income plans achievable i am excited about our next guest he's out of the great state of florida it's one of those tax friendly states that we really love and he has a passion for helping others um, uh, develop strategies that he developed over 40 years of trading and a career on wall street and he works with members of his uh, that he coaches to start replacing their active income with passive income using cash flow machine systems. Um, and members have access to Mark, and they get to see how Mark trades um, and the stuff he's making um, and how he how he does all of these things. So, in other words, he wants to help us create and preserve more wealth and create some freedom. And we're going to be talking in particular how he. Uh, how, how, how he does this um, using uh, the stock market as kind of like rental income. Please welcome to the show with me, Mark Yegi. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Hey, good, Brett. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Absolutely. For our listeners, get to know you for the first time. Would you give us a little bit more about your story and your current focus? Yeah, well, I've been in the market. I don't even want to say it, but it's like more than uh, more than four decades. And it was basically I started when I was about 12 years old, took my lawn mowing money, turned it into a, my first car, which was a 1975 cherry red Chevy Camaro. And I've been trading ever since all the way through high school, college, and had my own brokerage firm on Wall Street, sold that. And throughout that period of time, I've just been developing methods to uh, not just for myself, but to teach other people how to maximize income and maximize returns in the stock market. And as you know, it's not easy. Um, it is fun sometimes, but um, it's uh, it's very rewarding when you can turn around and take your life's work and help other people transform their life. And that's what I that's what I love to do now. So fantastic. Let's take one other step back. You know, Mark, I believe we've all been given certain gifts in this life. So I want you to go back to the high school days or the university days. And I want you to think about maybe a strength or two that you've been given. And I'm curious, how how do those strengths help how you help and bless people today? Well, I, I think one of them is I, I have the ability to communicate, actually, more specifically to take difficult or esoteric concepts and make them a little bit more easy to understand. So that's what I get to do every day in the stock market. It's, 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 it's not simple, but it is easy if you know how to do it sometimes. Um, so communication, I would say, would be one of them. I also have this ability. Um, I'm a little crazy. I go really deep on something when I get into it. Like um, about a year and a half ago, uh, I've been hearing about cryptocurrency for so long and I've been, you know, I've had my objections, you know, the same typical objection everybody else has about hacking and the government and, um, and you know, what about all the different tokens there are, but I decided to ask some questions and go really deep and I got all of my objections handled through cryptocurrency. Now I have a cryptocurrency hedge fund as well. So it's the ability to really focus in on something and go deep. And I think that's what we need to do in life. We can't be masters of everything. Um, so we have to get really specific and be really good at it. And that's, uh, you know, if you're good at what you do and I'm good at what I do, then we have specialization of labor and, um, and it makes the world a better place. So I would say those are two things. And the third one, if I have to throw a third one in there, is my ability to not reinvent the wheel, right? I, I believe that we should build what other people have done before us. So stand on the shoulders of giants that have come before us. So I find mentors, I find the best people that have done what they do in their fields. And then I go in and go really deep and I copy them. And then maybe I tweak and make things a little bit better. But but I don't try to start over from reinventing the wheel because that platform's already been created. So I would say those are probably the three areas off the top of my head that, uh, that would give me some strengths and abilities. Love it, Mark. Amazing. Three things, communication, complex, simple. Number two, deep thinker. Uh, number three does not need to recreate the wheel, mm -hmm. by the way, I want to, uh, and I love that you've started a cryptocurrency, uh, hedge fund or fund. And that is incredible because that's our, 
number one focus is to help the, those that are in cryptocurrency exit in a tax deferred manner and be able to invest and diversify. And so I want to touch on some of those things as, as we touch on this topic, but I want the theme to be this, right? And this is the theme that as you were talking about being a deep thinker and being open to something that perhaps at first you were, you know, had some, you know, some serious reservations and, and now you've, be, you've come on the other side of that part of it. And it's this, and it's a quote by Ray Dalio and it, it goes like this, we need to learn to trade the joy of being right for the joy of what's true. And too often our ego and our blind spots create barriers to opportunity that can um, can be huge for ourselves or for our families or for the investors that we serve. And so how do we trade the joy of being right for the joy of what's true? And that being so that being said, Mark, let's dive in right into the topic. And it's this. What's the number one secret to creating rental income? And I put those in quotations with yeah. the stock market. Well, you know, if you're if you're involved in the stock market, and I grew up in a stock market family, but I also grew up in a very big real estate family. So I, you know, I've done turn 1031 exchanges. I've I've uh, watched my dad develop apartments, rehab apartments, do the whole you know cash out refinance and then flip it and then hold it for income. You know, that's the same thing that most of the listeners or a lot of the listeners of your audience are doing. And I just I'm, I just realized that I'm not a great real estate guy. For some reason, my timing is off or whatever, but I'm willing to say, you know what? I'm not that great at real estate. I love it. I think it should be part of everybody's portfolio because of the obvious benefits you get. And one of the reasons I love being on your show is that it's, you know, I hate paying taxes, right? And, you know, there's like my accountant says, there's worse things in life than paying taxes. But if you don't have to do it, if you can figure out ways around it, and I know you do, you have some strategies around it, um, then by 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 God, you sure shouldn't have to pay them. And, you know, I know you're a Robert Kiyosaki fan and you know, he has a quote that you'll never pay any more to anyone in life than you'll pay to the tax person, right? The tax man. And so we've got to figure out legal ways to avoid it, not to circumvent it and do anything illegal, but to avoid it. And so what I do is since I'm not such a great real estate guy, but I'm a bit, a, a bit more of a stock market, market guy, um, I just understand businesses and I understand trends in the market, is I take assets and I build income from those assets. So we take income from an asset. So if you have a, a, a you know, 100, a, you know, 100 units in a, of apartments or an asset, and they create monthly income for you if you know how to do it. And that's what we teach people how to do is we, we sell options against them, which is the safe part of options. Buying options is the risky side of it. 80% of those generally expire worthless. But if you're the seller of options, you're creating income, you're getting income on that, you're giving somebody else the ability to buy your share at a predetermined price before a predetermined time. So let me give you an example of how that works. So let's say you look out your window and across the street, uh, you know, your neighbor's name is Jim and he's got a city block there for sale and he's got it for sale for, let's say, $100,000. And Jim wants to, you know, he's got, he's got the sign up there. He wants hundred thousand dollars for his property. And a woman named Kathy, you know, knows she happens to hear that Hilton is going to build the big resort right next to his property. So she knows that his property, or she thinks his property is going to go from being worth a hundred thousand to being a worth a million dollars, let's say, but she doesn't have the hundred thousand dollars to buy it. So she approaches Jim and she says, Hey, Jim, listen, I'll give you $10,000. If you'll tie up your property, don't sell it to anybody else from me for six months. And anytime in that six months, I have the ability to buy it for $100,000. And, you know, and so a couple of things can happen. Jim says, first of all, wait a minute, you're going to give me $10,000 just to take the property off the market, but you'll buy it for the price I'm asking right now anyway. Sounds like a good deal to me. I get to keep the $10,000 no matter what, right? She says, yeah, they sign and they sign the deal. They shake their hands. And now she's got the ability. She's got the option on that property. Well, she took a big risk, didn't she? Because two things can happen. Number one that option could expire worthless, in which case Hilton never came and built that property next door and Kathy, you know, loses her entire $10,000. So that's, that's where most options players are. They're, they're buyers. Or the other thing could happen is they do decide to build the building. And now she takes that hundred thousand dollar, that $10,000 investment and turns it into a million dollars, high risk, high reward on the buy side. In Jim's case, he's the seller. He makes the $10,000 no matter what. And if he sells it for a hundred thousand, he got his price. We do the same thing in the stock market. We do it on Amazon. We do it on Facebook, Google. Uh, Tesla is the big one right now that my customers are doing. So we'll own some shares just like we own that lot. Mm -hmm. And we sell 
options to other people who are what we call the gamblers. And we're the house. We get to collect the money. We don't make a huge amount of money, uh, Brett. We just made a bit, make a bit. Uh, and we shoot for about two to four percent a month is what our goal is. And, and if we do this right um, and you follow the rules of the system, you can create a lot of income from the stock market. And it's pretty darn passive. No toilets or trash, like you like to say. Right. Got it. Yep. Absolutely. I appreciate all that. And so um, you knew what your strengths were, which was not being great, maybe at operating real estate, but you understood the fundamentals of it and you like the investment tax advantages of it. Sure. And you love you love the investment of real estate. Um, but you also. Um, figured out a way to become really good at buying options, selling options, or or vice versa, knowing the differences between the two and how to exercise that. Is that a fair summary so far? Yeah, so far it's great. Very cool. Yeah. All right, so 2 to 4% per month, which equates to approximately what per year? Well, we shoot to two, for about 2 to 4% because most options are giving you a couple of percent, you know, 1 or 2% a week. So we shoot right. 2 to 4%. It doesn't sound like a huge amount of money until but it accumulates, it, right? Yeah. So what? So per year. So what would be a per year? I'm taking 2 yeah. to 4% times 12? Yeah, times 12. You know, okay. So let's say 3%. So 36% if we average the 2 to, you know, 3 in the, in the middle per month, 36%, which because the number one objection, obviously for all the real estate people, and we, we love our real estate people, I'm a real estate people. Yeah. And by the way, real estate is like a religion. And one of the religions of real estate is the 1031 exchange. The other part of the religion is the depreciation. That's one of the doctrines, right? And, and so the depreciation, depreciation, Mark. So what's the number one way to overcome the depreciation argument uh, against what you're saying? Well, you know, there's a couple. One is the smart aleck way, and that's to say, well, you're making 36%, not 15 so you can afford to pay the taxes. And, you know, obviously that's the case, but we know there's risk in the market and it doesn't always happen, but generally that's how we, that's how we write our programs and that's how the people in our programs are, are performing. But the other way is to do it within a tax deferred or a tax, uh, a tax protected situation, like an IRA. And, and we can, you can do this in your IRA very easily. Some of our best customers just continue to, to, to pile on and compound those investments and those gains in the IRA. So there's no, there's no depreciation. There's no phantom income per se, but we do get that tax deferred appreciation over time. So in the beginning, we talked about trading the joy of being right for the joy of what's true, right? Generally speaking, as real estate people were like, man, that sounds crazy, Mark, maybe too much, you know, too much risk, you know, wow, if you're actually doing it like that on a consistent basis, and of course, past performance is not a future guarantee of future results. Right. So, I mean, you must get this every single day, but I'm just curious, like, what can you share with the track record of this, right? How have you done during the 2008 crash or the dot-com crash or the, you know, the, the, the downturn of, 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 uh, with COVID? I mean, we have, we have a group that we've looked at and worked with called Swan and Swan has a, a similar model in which they're putting 90% of an investment in the S and P and they're buying, buying the, the options, right? Put options at 10% and these are two year, to your options, right? So that if and when the market hits, they're able to buy at a exercise those options and then buy at a discount and kind of ride the wave back up, if you will. But they're not also making as much gain because they're having to, you know, you know, if they have to buy those options. So that there's this kind of this thing there, and it's new to me, and I and I was like, yeah, skeptical, and I'm watching it and looking at it. So just talk to us about some of the performance, if you can. Yeah, so I think you're talking about a selling put strategy, which is a bullish strategy as well. It's very similar to what we do. Ours statistically makes a little bit more money. There's a little bit more work involved in it. In other words, it's instead of being, uh, you know, 20 minutes a, a week, it might be 30 minutes a week, for example, to find that situation. We don't like the S&P 500 because there's, there's, there's dividends, there's all kinds of wonkiness that comes with it. Plus, you're buying an average basket of goods. And um, I don't know about you, but I didn't wake up this morning going, oh, I want to be average today. I So we concentrate on what we do. We concentrate on really good high cap stocks that people trade that have some volatility. Things like Tesla, the ones I've mentioned, Apple, Microsoft, um, you know, Facebook, those have some volatility, not Facebook anymore, by the way, but um, they have volatility. So they that volatility allows the income to increase. And when you get income increasing every month, it also gives you a cushion. You're lowering your basis every month. So you asked about track record. And I, I can give you all kinds of stories. I can tell you there are people in my system that that do stick to the two and three percent rules. And that's a very conservative way of trading our system. And then you can actually turn up the dial a little bit and you can add some other things like called synthetics to it makes it a little more exciting, but it also increases your return. So I had the same question that you have and 
I, I decided a couple of years ago that I was tired of the question because the questions I normally get is it sounds too good to be true. Why doesn't everybody do it? And then, you know, why are you telling everybody else in the world about it? Why don't you just do it yourself? So I had this IRA. It was a Schwab IRA started with $111,820. And I said, you know what, everybody, I'm just going to take this IRA and prove to you that this is possible. April 30th of 2020. Now the timing was good. So I, I will admit that, but it doesn't matter. Um, we started with 111,000 and Two months ago, which is 19 months hence, you know, the, the account is worth $568,000. Now, that's a lot more than 36% because that's we, we tweak, we, we roll the dial up. And if you look at that kind of percentage return, most people just go, that's just impossible to redo. And we continue to do it. I have the IRA, I've published the results. But if you don't want to go to that level, because I have a higher risk tolerance than most people, even though I believe this is a fairly you know, safe and less risky system, we have people in our system that are doctors and, um, and psychiatrists and all kinds of people that are in our program. There's their doctors too, I guess. And, um, and they make you know, 60, 70% a year. So they're also dialing it up a bit, but maybe not as much as I do. It happens all the time. You just have to have a system. In anything you do, whether it's real estate or whether it's having an Amazon store or being, a, being in the stock market, you have to have a system. And every system has rules, right? You can't just decide I'm gonna be a good golfer and show up at the golf course. You gotta get a golf book, but that doesn't make you a good golfer. You should have a coach. So you should know what the rules are and you should practice those rules and stick to them. And the hardest thing in making money, because money is emotion, is sticking to those rules. And I find that the brain wants to stray and try these things. And those are the things that get you in trouble. But those are the things that also give you that zest for life. We want to stay away from that. We have a very boring system for making money. We want to bore you into wealth. That's the way we look at it. Amazing. I can't help but think of a couple parallels with the Deferred Sales Trust because it's the same thing we get yeah. every single day. Sounds too good to be true. Why hasn't yeah. everyone been doing it for all these years? Like, well, there's been thousands of these and billions under management. And it's been tested by the IRS a dozen times. And well, why doesn't my trusted advisor know about it? And well, because he hasn't met us yet. But once he meets us, he'll, you know, he'll probably join us as most of them do. And on and on and on it goes. But you know, again, back to that quote, right? Can we take the spirit of trading the joy of being right for mm -hmm. the joy of what's true? And that's, by the way, by Ray Dalio, who's yeah. a financial advisor extraordinaire, very most respected guy in the world for this for, for many, many, many years. And I read his book, Principles. And in that book, he breaks this down. In fact, he made a children's book out of it somewhere around here. I read it to my kids. I got four daughters and, and, a, and a baby boy. And I read it to my kids because it's like it's broken down to very simple pages. But I mean, you guys, I can read this book every day. I'm like, this is so true and so good, so right. And so my point of all that is just because someone hasn't heard of it doesn't mean um, that it's not true and it doesn't work. But you're right. We do fall to the level of our systems. We don't rise to the level of our goals. That's we right. fall to the level of our systems. And so what's the hardest part about breaking that false belief? Or what's the best way, Mark? Because we can talk logic all day. But what have you found as the best way to break that false belief for people who think it's, you know, Six to 10 is amazing if I can get that consistently, but 36 is just un unbelievable. So I don't even want to think that. So what's the best way you've been able to, to break that mindset? It's, I think what, and first of all, thank you for being open to even discussing it. Once, once I start getting into the numbers, people just kind of shut off because they don't believe it, but it really is provable and I, it's documented, but it, it's, um, it's really taking control. I have a saying, never give up your power in your health, your wealth, or your time. And when, you, when most people give up their power, like, you know, doctor says you got six months to live and they decide that, you know, five months and 29 days, that's it. And they're gone. Right. But they don't seek that second or third opinion or they don't take control of their health. The same thing happens in our wealth. Right. So you're teaching people this strategy that you have and you're an expert in it. You're really good. at it. And you're like, you want to tell you got the cure to cancer for for saving money on taxes. Right. And you want to go out and tell the world. But the world is skeptical. So the first step I would say is take control, get financially educated right? That's the most important thing in our society, because I don't know about you, but in my grade school and high school, they didn't teach me anything about money, but I use money every single day. But I know the heck out of Romeo and Juliet. And I know about the Pythagorean theorem. I don't use those at all, right? So we've got to get educated. You've got to teach people about taxes to avoid paying the number one, uh, you know, taker of your money in your entire life. And that's the tax person. So you've got to get financial education. Number two, well, I, you know, number two basically is what we do. We we create cash flowing passive income. You know, that's what we do, and that's what. Just go do it. Do. In other words, just just hire the coach, get with the group, get with the get with the tribe, and start doing the thing. 
Yeah. I mean, what, yeah. whether it's your stuff or real estate yeah. or what, you know, people, people d- don't realize they think real estate's buying a big a piece of land sometimes and sitting on it for 20 years. And certainly I've got some of that and it sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but uh-huh. boy, if you're making a little bit of cash along the way and you can just start to add to that, add to that portfolio and build it even in real estate, whether mm-hmm. it's uh, you know, strip malls or apartments, whatever you're good at, or you want to do it in the stock market, or you want to do it by investing in businesses, make sure they're cash flowing and make sure that you're letting people who are good at doing what they do, do what they do, right? right. Hire, that's what Warren Buffett does, right? He hires the best people, he buys their company, and he keeps everything intact and he just makes money off it. Right. Hire the who, don't be the how. That's and then it. also it's like riding a bike. Right? I always tell all of my clients, potential clients, like it's like riding a bike. Like I could literally spend as much time and energy trying to break everything down, all the little boxes and talk to all the clients, all the things. But until you're in the deal until you're in you know working with the trust and the trustee and all the different you know tax attorneys and everyone else you're not you, he's, he's gonna feel wobbly right the bike's gonna feel wobbly you know you, you're not going to be expected to go you know, 70 mile an hour down the road with us on the speed bikes right but you will become comfortable as you're doing same thing with a 1031 exchange by the way or the first time you did your first fix and flip the first time you did you know stock training with mark yegi by the way you can learn more about mark yegi at go.destinycreation.com that's go dot destiny creation.com to uh, to jump into what he's doing but that's with anything in life right but i but there's this there is this thing though you're right with wealth money and taxes like it's part of why i love what we do because i say it's like the fourth quarter like we have a live deal right now this particular client he's out of texas he's selling a 15 million dollar business he has right. zero basis right and he's literally just heard about me yesterday. We, I was on the phone with him this morning for 30 minutes. And his mind's like, you know, in my, his mind, he was already either going to pay the check, write the check, or had some other strategy maybe he's going to use. But I'm l- talking him through it. And he's just like, emotion. it's the emotion, right? It's not sure. like, okay, logically, I can give him that. And here's a, here's the thing. I don't know. So one, one of the ways, and I'll, I'll share, I was asking those questions part of it because I wanted to also answer it myself. And I'm wondering what you think about this. Okay. I was telling him a story, right? I So as humans, we don't, we don't, uh, we're not convinced or persuaded by logic because you're going to have your logic. I'm going to have my logic. And our logic is a part of the brain that basically it's like the fight or flight. You're just going to keep, you know, kind of butting heads. However, we do convince ourselves by logic. Once our emotions, the trust and the faith part are, are kind of, kind of in place. And so the part of what, what I've learned from a, a brilliant guy named Russell Brunson, who wrote a, a book called expert, expert secrets. Yep. And he says, uh, you got people have stories in their minds and we've just got to tell a better story. So what is the better story that you're going to tell that trumps their story? And to the extent that your, your story is not, you know, bigger or better than their story, they're not going to go into the logic or be open to that. So this is the story. And I want to tell you the story and see what you think about it, Mark. Yagi. So you probably know a guy named Bill Gross, right? Sure. Okay. And so Bill Gross, and, and I don't know if you heard a guy named David Young, but David Young was Bill Gross's like right hand guy and about four others, they built PIMCO. And I know you know PIMCO from yep. about 80 billion to 1.2 trillion over about a 20 year period of time, big, big, long period of time. So very respected guys, you know, uh, very thought out. They've managed money for wealth for this big, you know, big pension fund, sovereign wealth, you know, just huge worldwide. Right. Well, anyways, they get approached with a lot of tax deferral strategies from a lot of different people trying to get them to sell their thing. Uh, well, they built PIMCO up. They all get this big payday. They retire. David Young and four other guys from a group called Anfil Capital about 15 years ago, kind of more boutique, you know, serving financial advisors as money managers. He's David's an economist. He's, he speaks and he's a uh, maybe an adjunct professor at UC Irvine. All of these cool things. Anyways, four years ago, he gets approached with a deferred sales trust, right? And like most things, he's like, you know, I, I I'm. No, you know, I'm really cautious and I'm not going to put something, my name on something that I'm not sure of, but they said, no, 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 it's different. Keep an open mind. Would you be open to looking at it? He goes, sure. I'll put my due diligence hat on. We'll look at it. And he didn't look at it for two days or two weeks or two months, but he looked at it for two years and he had his legal team look at it and he had his tax people look at it and he talked to the banks and he talked to the clients and he, and he flew back and he met with um, one of my business partners, who's the tax attorneys, and they mapped it all out on a whiteboard for two days. And this is like the end of the two years and they come out of that room. And this is what, this is what, uh, the guys were saying, his whole team, a, that is the smartest tax man. And maybe even the smartest man we've ever met B we are all in and we will become a part of the deferred sales trust inner circle and provide advisory services and manage money for any deferred sales trust client, no matter what the size is. 
And so what I always say to part people, Mark, is, and that's the story. What you know, this is the story I feel like that that really can take the big domino of false belief over the top. And it's this: if it's good enough for David Young yeah. and his legal team, after two years of due diligence, after he went with Bill Gross for twenty years at Pimco and built that all up, some of the biggest wealth in the world, and they put their name on it, is it good enough for Mark Brett? and whoever else is considering the deferred sales trust. So what do you think about that, Mark? Well, from what perspective? I mean, I love, there's lots of things I could talk about. Any actually. perspective, I'm just open what you think about it because I want to learn from you because you're, you're in a you're, you're different, a little bit similar world, but but uh, a little bit different thing, so. Well, I mean, I love the fact that he went deep because that's kind of how I do things. I mean, maybe two years is probably a little long for me, but the fact that he was like open, first of all, to something that he could have been closed to, he's doing well enough without this deferred sales trust idea. But he was open to it. He went deep on it, found it was some things. And then he enrolled. Right. And, you know, obviously I, re I resonate with the story because that's kind of the way I operate as well. Um, you know, one of my mentors was Edward Thorpe and Edward Thorpe in the in the 40, in the 50s. He was a mathematics professor at MIT. You've heard of him. And he um, he we went to Vegas and he figured out how to beat roulette and they kicked him out of Las Vegas. So he went back to Vegas with his students in blackjack and you've probably seen the movie where they went to vegas and they cleaned vegas out and they got banned from las vegas in blackjack he wrote a book called beat the dealer it was all based on math and then he wrote a book on the stock market after he was kicked out of, the, of las vegas and i read this book when i was 14 years old and this is the same strategy i use today back then they didn't have options they use warrants today we have options and we have weekly options we have tons of tools that are at our availability but we have so much clouded information in front of us right we're hurt we we hear from wall street you got to diversify you know your investments you know you've got to make sure that you you know put your money you got to save your money right You've got to do all of these things that Wall Street tells you to do, but some of the things they tell you to do are not really good rules. So like David did here, David Young, right? He cleared out the, 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 the bad information so that he could see clearly, and then he realized the merits of what uh, that strategy was. And I think that's brilliant and, and, and what everybody should do when they're trying to learn. It goes back to that financial education that I was talking about. It's so important. So good. Thank you, Mark, for sharing that. I appreciate that. And I like the idea you said enrolled, right? He didn't just, you know, he didn't just, and by the way, he didn't make a quick decision and maybe he made a little yeah. slow decision, but these type of big decisions for, for very thoughtful people. And he's probably one of the most thoughtful people I've ever met. He's brilliant. And, and I, and I have on my podcast, by the way, people can go listen to that, to that show, search David Young, Brett Swartz on YouTube. And you can see the whole, whole episode. And, um, I just, I, I just so appreciate the opportunity to learn from people because it's one thing for like, I mean, I'm a humble kid who grew up in construction with parents and in real estate and did 1031s mm -hmm. at Marcus and Millichap. Like, I mean, I don't, I'm not a CPA tax attorney, but I've, I've been studying under them for many years. And then to get that third party validation, that's continual. I've had that for since 2009, just every time it's that certainty of conviction, right? That allows us to, you know, either invest in or take action or enroll. And having that is so important. And it's how do you get there? You know, well, you find the guides, you find the experts, you do the due diligence, you go deep. And so all that being said, we could probably go on for hours, Mark, but we're running out of time. <laughs> Are you ready for the lightning round? Oh, sure. Let's do a lightning round. All yeah. right. Knowing what you know now, if you can go back to your 25 year old self, what's the one golden nugget you'd make sure to tell yourself to do? 25, uh, invest in yourself and invest in your wealth. In other words, start investing when you're 25, not when you're 45 or 65. Perfect. Number one book you've recommended or gifted the most in the past year? I can tell you, this is the book I'm reading right now and I can't put it down. It's a book called The Bitcoin Standard um, by uh, Safidian Amos, A-M-M-O-U-S. Fantastic book, follows a book called The Fiat Standard, and it really teaches people about what's going on with the Fed, what's going on with money, what we're doing irresponsibly, and how we're debasing our currencies, not just in the US, but all around the world. I can't put it down. I keep rereading it now. So The Bitcoin Standard is phenomenal. Excellent. Question number three, uh, what are you most curious about right now? Well, probably following along with that, I'm really curious about what's going to happen with our, our currency. Um, I think the fact that we've printed, you know, 40% more than we've ever printed in the entire history of the United States, and we've just done that in the last two years, is uh, not boding well for the strength of our currency and the strength of our economy. And I think uh, this is, I've been reading a lot of books on this lately, including the one I just mentioned, and it's its the beginning or maybe the middle of, uh, of something that could be pretty bad down the road. So I'm, I'm actually very curious about how the Fed is going to screw this up, or maybe they won't. We'll see. We'll see. Great. Uh, second to last question. What's your favorite leadership quote or theme that you strive to live by? 
Um, I, you know, my favorite leadership quote, I would say, if you've always, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. So kind of the theme of our call here today is that be open to new things and be open to there are better things that we don't know what we don't know all the time. I would say that would be my quote. Fantastic. Last question, Mark, after helping so many people uh, create and preserve more wealth through your coaching, through investing, through your hedge fund, um, and, and maybe all the other stuff you've accomplished over the years, right? What's the, what's the top one or two habits that you practice to stay centered in your values and stay encouraged to charge forward to reach new heights? Hmm. I would say you, you, you just basically stay stay true to yourself, right? Like have, have the values that you were raised with. Hopefully you were raised with some good ones that you can build your life around and stay true to those values. And also surround yourself with a tribe of people that can support and encourage you to maintain those values as you kind of reciprocate for them to do the same. Fantastic. Hey, Mark, yeah, it's been more than a pleasure. Uh, I want to thank you for being on the show. I want to thank you for using uh, the gifts and sharing them with us of communication, of being a deep thinker, of making the complex simple, and also um, not needing to recreate the wheel um, and so much more today. And I want to encourage you to keep using those gifts to help more people and bless more people. And for our listeners who want to get in touch with you, would you remind them one last time what's the best place for them to find you? Yeah, so it's go.destinycreation. Dot com, And then we're going to set up a special page for this call, uh, for this podcast, and that's CGTS for Capital Gains Tax Solution. So it's go.destinycreation.com forward slash slash CGTS. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. And also thank our listeners for listening to the episode of the Capital Gains Tax Solutions Podcast. By the way, we're also streaming on expertcresecrets.com, uh, where we believe most high net worth individuals and those who help them, they struggle with clarifying their capital gains tax deferral options. Not having a clear plan is the enemy. And using a proven tax deferral strategy, such as the Deferred Sales Trust, the best way for you to exit cryptocurrency, business, real estate, public, private stock, save a failed 1031 exchange so you can create and preserve more wealth or help your clients do the same. I want to encourage you to go to capitalgainstaxsolutions.com to to learn more about getting your deferred sales trust transaction started today as well go to our youtube channel subscribe rate review um, on itunes as well if you're there so appreciate that everyone out there and look for our new book it's coming out here in the next 30 days building a tax deferred action strategy and it's the proven playbook for unlocking your ideal wealth plan when selling assets of any kind for yourself or your clients we have some cool people in there including a guy you might have seen on shark tank the guy's name is Kevin Harrington. He'll be a part of the chat, one of the chapters there. Also, David Young will be a chapter there as well. We so appreciate everyone out there that's listening and watching. Um, and we'll see you real soon. Talk to you real soon. Bye now.